Greetings, y'all. I am, uh, I had to stop. I'm done with my, my capsuling up today and I seen one of my tags. Somebody tagged me into a post and they said Dr. CB on it. I always happen to look at some of the posts, but like people like to try to, you know, bring his, his work towards me. Like, yeah, it's controversial and I respect the man's, you know, I respect the healer's work. Yes, some great intentions, you know. And I used to, I used to listen to his work back in the day, but ten years of study of my own, I found a lot of controversy that he believes in, that I believe in, the other healers, and everybody else got their own learning path. Yeah, follow who you want to follow, but make sure you do your own homework, please. Please make sure you do your own homework. So. This post is about um, spinach, and he doesn't agree with spinach. He's not an advocate of spinach. Why? Because it can cause some kidney stones, I guess. Well, the main ingredient or the main molecule of that is the oxalate. The oxalate is something that plants make, animals make, humans make, naturally make it. It's inside of our bodies. Our liver is the one that has to break it down. But sometimes that liver ain't able to break it down. And why? Because some of y'all are eating a high level of meat protein, making it higher risk of oxalate in your body. You see, there's a lot of things that the liver has to do. And when we're consuming a lot of oxalates, then it has to be converted like the vitamin C has to be converted and the spinach um, the spinach is at a 7.0 pH that's what the post was about the post was saying that it neutralizes the body's pH it doesn't do anything for the body how is that possible now we know most of the fruits and vegetables are on the acidic level now, if you didn't know, go to the federal guidelines. There's laws against this. There's laws on this, I mean, that tell you the acid and alkaline chart of all the vegetables, all the fruits. Y'all thought that you just could not go get that information? You don't have to listen to everyone. You can easily research all of this information. That easy. So, it's at a 6.8, that spinach. So anything that's going towards 7 or 7.3, which is the range between our blood and our water in our bodies, that is your serum level. It's supposed to be between 7.3 and 7.45. Hmm. That means that the kidneys is very important. The kidneys are very important. I mean, you could get a kidney stone, right? Hmm. So, 90% of your blood, which is plasma, is made of water. So make sure you're drinking some mineral water. Make sure you got some, some fulvic acid in there, some, some type of magnesium in there. Because, you know, inside of our bodies, to reestablish, to reestablish the alkalinity in our body, because we've got to stay at a 7.3 or 7.45, because if you don't, you're sick. If you go under 7.3, you're gonna have some symptoms that's saying that you're sick. So what happens is inside of your body, all of your alkaline foods are like calcium, magnesium, you know, that's a great ratio. Your potassium, all of those great ratios. But see, the spinach has what, 500 milligrams of uh, calcium, 800 milligrams of potassium, it's great. So those who will have anemia, type of blood iron problems, that would be great for those people who have uh, anemia. Spinach is good for them. But those who are having kidney stones, it ain't good for them. So I think we'll agree, you know, too much of a good thing could be a bad thing. So we must keep a balance. Must keep a balance. So I'm not on this alkaline and diet thing because hey 
we have high creatinine levels. Nitrogen and hydrogen makes ammonia. We can drink ammonia then if we cared about the pH level so much. But we have to secrete that too. So oxalates we have to secrete and all of that's going through our endocrine system. So you got too much of something, you can have uh, para-hypothyroidism. That's too much calcium because the bones have to release calcium. The bones also have to release magnesium. So those women who have postmenstrual disorders or have those uh, osteoporosis, that's because of the release of so much calcium, so much magnesium over the years of your menstruation. Yeah, it's a very, you have to, that's, that's your alkalinity right there, that's your alkalinity. So all of the foods that, that, that boost the alkalinity, yeah, it's going to be your leafy green vegetables. And, and it's, it's about proper food combining. Proper food combining. So if you're watching this video, if you're watching this video, I'm going to be in Atlanta. Um, I post up the address. I've been seeing some flyers online saying where I'm going to be at. Um, and then I'm going to be in South Carolina. I'm going to start teaching about proper food combining with the herbs are actually doing your supplementations and everything that's on the website. But um, there's good calcium uh, supplements on there, good magnesium supplements. Go so check the things out. There's plenty of information right there for you to see. So um, I'm just not going to promote no alkaline diet. I believe that shalom means to be whole. And whole must be balanced. That's the principles of my art. So, I give thanks for the watching. God bless.